and welcome to Plant Me Green TV. I'm Ed Tiley. Today we've got expert nurseryman Eric Rogers here with us and he's going to show us how in the fall of the year we need to prune our flowering evergreen and our fruit trees so that come spring they'll come up as beautiful and as bushy as they possibly can. Hey Eric, how Hi. are you? How are you How's doing, Ed? Good to I see you. you brought your pruning shears. I sure did. I've got both kinds of shears, actually. Oh, okay, because I was wondering if some of these were going to get to be about two inches tall. Yeah, that could do it. All right. That'd be the fastest way to prune them, probably. Maybe not the best way. Well, let's start out here. What, what is this uh, evergreen here? This is a Leyland Cypress. Uh, you've probably seen this on some of the Christmas promotions. Yeah, in fact, we suggested that people get one and put it in their house and then plant it outside for enjoying later down the year. Exactly, exactly. Well this is a young Leland Cypress here and it hasn't quite got to the maturity yet that you would want to use it for that, but with the right kind of pruning you could have a really nice Christmas tree out of this. Okay, give us a shot here. Okay. You would just want to kind of shape it up into a pyramid shape and notice I'm really just kind of cutting the tips. I'm not trying to cut a lot off of it. Okay. I want it to get a, you know, a good chance to branch out a little bit. So you want sort of that cone Christmas tree shape. That's right. right. Now I like using shears for this kind of stuff, but you can also use hand pruners if you want to. It just might take a lot longer. Excellent. Alright, so what about the magnolia Well here? the magnolia tree, we're not going to prune with that. That would be a little much. Okay. Now this magnolia is uh, an evergreen. One of the things that's really nice about the magnolias is the blooms they have on there, which just actually has some blooms coming out. But now in the winter time, you're really not that worried about the blooms. This tree actually is overdue for a pruning. That's why I selected it. Its branches on this tree are getting to where they're going to be really heavy come later on. So what we could do here is just come in and cut it real close to the leaf on there, not too far down. All right, but now you have this really nice bloom here that isn't going to be there for spring. Well, no, it's not going to be there for winter. Okay. Because it's actually going to be blooming into the winter time and the first frost that comes along will kill we that kill bloom that. off anyway. Yeah, okay. So and really, the summertime is really when the magnolia blooms. So the southern magnolia, summertime is the right, So what's going to happen at that point where you made the cut? Okay, what's going to happen is, I've, basically by taking off the tip is what I've done, I've encouraged all the buds that are along the branch here to start bloom or to start coming out on there. It's a hormone change, basically, is what has happened. Okay. And by right. cutting those off. Now, what I've also done is not only is it going to go out to be thicker, but these branches are going to get a chance to thicken up a little bit as well and get a little bit stronger. And again, just like with the Leyland, you're going to get a fuller tree overall. Okay. This is uh, a that, fruit tree of some sort. Yes, here. that's a peach tree. Okay. And this has gone dormant for the season. It sure has. There's not a leaf left on it. Well, and that's a good thing because you need those cold hours of being dormant for it to actually produce fruit. Absolutely. No cold, no fruit. Now, you don't want to do too much to it right now, but one thing you do want to do is you're not going to get much fruit on a tree this size. You really need it to be a little bit older before that. But the work you do well, now... Well, any fruit that you really would get would put the limb in danger exactly. of breaking. Exactly. there'd be so much weight out here and it's... Exactly. Not very big around. So we want to strengthen it up a little bit. So oh why? What we're going to yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to cut it back and try to get these branches a little bit stronger on there. And again, it's the same thing. Where I make a cut on there, all the buds along there are going to get a chance to, to branch out. Now it's not going to do anything right now because it's, the tree is dormant. It's getting ready for the winter time. And again, it's going to fill out and get a little bit thicker tree. Plus, if it grows too tall, you're not going to be able to pick fruit that's way up in the air, 20 feet up. It would be much, much preferable to have it down low. One other thing you want to look at too, I don't know if you can see this branch here, it's actually rubbing against the main stem. Oh yeah. Now if yeah. I leave that there, so, the wind is going to cause those two to rub against each other. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the smaller one, take that off. Way down at the end. Way down so at the end. So that this will maybe branch and come around? Yep. Now we've got a good old crepe myrtle here. Yes, we do. Now, now the crepe what do we want to do with him? <laughs> the crepe myrtle is done blooming for the year. Now it's starting to go dormant, but it hasn't quite finished going dormant. But one thing you can do before the winter time 
these little seed heads on here, which haven't fully matured yet, when they do mature, they're going to go and pop open. They're going to all be over the ground, yeah. all over the place, the all over your fuzzy woodies. patio furniture, all over your driveway, your sidewalk, yourself when you walk by it. Yep. So you can go. There's no benefit to having those on there. So we can actually just go and remove those, cut those off, nip it, Ange, nip it right off of there. Yeah. Now sometimes you get these trees too tall and there's really not much you can do about it without getting a pole saw involved, but while they're this size you can do it. Now another thing too that a lot of people don't think about is in the summertime when these are blooming, this is a summer blooming tree, it's going to bloom all summer long and part way into the fall even, a little bit if you're in the right climate. If you cut off the old blooms on a crepe myrtle, you can actually encourage it to rebloom so you'll extend your blooming season, plus it'll be a prettier tree overall the branches don't get as heavy and don't tend to fall over. So what you're saying is prune it when yeah. you think it's got the last flower set on it? Well, actually, when the, when the flowers start to die off on there, you can just go out and just prune those old flowers off, and it'll encourage new blooms to come out later on on that same branch. All right. Okay. And it also makes a cleaner tree. You don't have as much of this stuff to clean up. All right. So well, great. You're pruning basically for health, for appearance, to get more fruit, to get more flowers. Well, health means more flowers and more fruit. That's right. And the appearance is in the eye of the beholder. That's right. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. So there, so, there you have it. How to prune up your trees so that this spring they're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Thanks for tuning in to Plant Me Green TV. I'm Ed Tiley. And next time you're next to a computer or your mobile device, Check out plantmegreen.com and see what this week's specials are.